Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing some of the best art materials for sketching and even if you are just at the very beginning starting out with your sketchbook journey. I've also got a couple of tips on how to save a bit of money on buying those art materials as well. And don't forget to stay right to the end as well because I'm going to be sharing one of my sketchbooks showing you a few of the pages and how I've used some of the materials that I share in today's video, how I've used them together and kind of what my favourite combinations are right now. Now I've created a free download for you with a full list of all materials that I've mentioned in this video and a few more as well. If you'd like to get your hands on that then don't forget to check the link below this video where you can sign up for free and grab yourself that list right now. Okay, so when you're thinking about sketching, you're likely going to want a few of these combinations. So something that's going to do some black and white, something that's going to give you some colour, some wet media, some dry, something that's perhaps opaque and something that isn't. But quite honestly, you could get started with a graphite pencil and a cheap sketchbook. It really is as simple as that. Now behind me I've got what might appear like an entire art shop and you haven't seen the rest of the studio where other bits are lurking as well. And you might say, oh it's alright for you Sophie, you've got all these materials. You have to remember that I've been an artist on and off most of my life. I've gathered a lot of these things. Some things actually even belonged to my mum. I've got some pencils over here that were mine when I was a child at school and one of my daughters used them. So I'll show you those later because some of them are really small and they're packed in the tin. Um, and I've got some things I've gathered over the last few years as well. So my tip here is don't throw anything out. And you'll be really grateful to hear that because if I'd thrown out a lot of these things when I'd stopped using them, I wouldn't have a beautiful array of sketching materials that I'm loving to use right now. Okay, so I've written down a kind of list of what I would call basic materials, moving on from that pencil and sketchbook. And some of the things I have here today, so I'll show you those as well. Some of them I don't use, but I know that a lot of other people who are sketchbooking are using them. So I would say something like an A5 Royal Talons sketchbook. I don't have the Royal Talons, but it's definitely next on my order. It's affordable, the paper's good enough, and it's a great place to get started. The other thing that's nice about it is it doesn't have a spiral bound because it's quite nice to lay your sketchbook flat and if you do something that you think well this is rather nice I could make it into a card or a print then it's pretty easy to lay on a scanner um, clean up your artwork on Photoshop and then go ahead and make it into a product. So I have these, these are actually Cass Art from Brighton in the UK, it's a little bit of home. I often buy them and bring them over here because I can't get them here in Australia. So this is an A5, I think this is a really great place to start because it also just fits in your bag, right? So it's super simple size A5, whatever type you decide, but I like these, there aren't many pages to them and actually if you are in the UK you can buy, I think, I think it's a set of three, so super useful. They also come in A4 as well. And then I would simply use some lead pencil or graphite, so I definitely have my favourite graphite here. It's quite messy, this is a 6B so it's quite dark, so I used to use it a lot and I've got a few others that are bound in kind of plastic and something, so um, something like that. I also have my trusty H B um, and H pencils, you can see they're a bit worn down, and just a bowl with a sharpener and a rubber. I do actually have a double sharpener, but for some reason there's just the single in there today. And this is a little bowl that I picked up, I don't know, years ago. Little, I had a series of them that I used to mix paint in, I don't know what happened to them. So that's sort of basic as well. And then you're going to want some sort of wet media, so some sort of paint. Now I recommend gouache at this point because it's a nice combination between watercolour and acrylic, so it's opaque which means that you can layer on top of layer, whereas watercolour it's got different it's got different properties to it and acrylic it's quite difficult to take out and about um, and once it's dry it's dry you can't play or move with it and I do use both of those things but I think as a beginner um, gouache is a great place to start and you can get all different sorts as well. Now I was actually introduced to this by an artist in the UK and I've only just bought it, it's actually untouched. <laughs> um, it's at the lower end of the market price wise but it gives you a lot of paint. It's quite heavy so I don't know that I'd want to take it out and about with me but 
um, perhaps you could. There's a really large number of colors. There's a little palette and some brushes as well. So this is, um, this is quite a useful place to start. However, I didn't start here. I started a bit more at the higher end of the scale, which I like. And this is the Holbein Artists um, gouache. Now the downside with that is they're really small tubes and you use the paint up really, really quickly, especially once I realized that I loved it, that this doesn't really go very far. However, it's pretty light. And if you just keep them in a little bag or you keep them in the box, that becomes a travel pack. So you definitely want some paints. If you prefer watercolor, then here's a great place to start. Something like a little, I think this is a Windsor and Newton. I've had these for ages. I think I used to have loads of them actually. Um, just a really, really simple paint set. And you can use the paints that are in here or you can actually buy your own pans and change them out to colors that you would like. You just gotta get in there, probably not with my nails, but you gotta, you gotta get in there with a knife and get those out and you can replace them with the colors that you like. Super simple, goes again, really easy in a little bag. So great for travel pack, but also a brilliant place to start. Now, if you say to me, okay, I don't wanna buy a whole pack, I'm not sure if I like gouache, then the best place to start really is actually just to buy your primary colors Here's a red, yellow, and blue, and I've got a primary yellow, phthalo blue, and flame red, and a big tube of white. As you can see, the tube of white has had some fair hammering, um, and these are still going strong. So this is really, really simple. Don't do what Sophie did, and that is take it in your hand luggage, not in a bag, because I just think I slipped them in the side pocket of my carry bag, and one of them exploded inside. So if you're going in an airplane, do not take it hand luggage unless it's in a zip-locked bag. Put it in the hole. <laughs> um, so that would be a really great and simple place to start where paints are concerned. And then with brushes, just really keep it really simple. You definitely want a round brush, really easy for moving the paint around, and a smaller one for details. And then I quite like a square. I don't use this that often. I have to admit this is my go-to. These are not expensive brushes either. These are just bog standard, I think student watercolor brushes. Um, I'll likely go through them and then just replace them again. It's really easy to find palettes these days. So again, I've got these little tiny palettes. They've still got the gouache in because I can just wet that and bring it back to life again. It's very, very nice, a bit like your watercolors. Um, so these were super cheap and again, easy to transport, except they probably need to go in a bag or something. Or you might want to get something a little larger. I actually quite like this because I'm mixing my own shades of things and I know exactly where they're located. It might look like a mess to everybody else, but I know what colors are where. And so this was a big, bigger palette. So great if you've got studio. And then really, I would say the last thing, I went back in the kind of color department, and that is to have some pencils. Now, you might not be ready to invest in a whole box of pencils. This is the kind of basic sort of start a place, but you do want to have some. So what you might do is go and buy individual pencils and maybe just buy some colors that you really like. Now I've grown up with color pencils from school. Again, I'm gonna show you a box of those um, in a minute, but you could just go and grab, so I grabbed some loose pencils from a brand that I hadn't used. These are actually Faber-Castell. And I just bought, I think I was maybe even traveling when I bought these. I just bought some greens and browns because I didn't have them with me. And those are just five color pencils that when used on top of the gouache makes life really easy. So that's a super simple, quick and easy starter materials. Okay, so I've titled this bit the would be nice to have section. So as you discover what sort of things that you like, whether you like paint and you're going to have more paint or whether you actually like pencils. We haven't even talked about markers or pens or any of those things. So I have quite an extensive list. I've actually written it out so I don't forget anything, but pretty much they're on the table here. So I will give them a go. So you might want to upgrade next up to a better quality sketchbook. Now, I really like these CAS art ones. I like the paper, they're easy to carry, but my preferred sketchbook is actually a C White, and again, it's a British brand. Um, I would recommend, though, avoiding the spiral bound because, like I said earlier, it's pretty difficult to lay down, and you can't really make a nice um, spread when you've got, so for example, I've got bits of paper in between because I'm using crayons and things that smudge. So this is a sneak peek on my challenge, actually. Um, 
so if you want to make a spread going across both pages, you've got the spiral bound in the middle, which isn't so great. However, I had it already. I'd bought it. I hadn't used it. And so I love it. I love the paper. I also really love square sketchbooks. I've got another really big one that I started a few years ago for something else. And it's made me think I might go and get another square one. So this is the A4 sized and um, I've started doing, I'm actually um, in a Patreon, so I'm, I'm following somebody else's Patreon. This is the book dedicated to that. So shout out to Katie Moody. Thank you very much. You're very inspired by what you're doing. So this is a book just for her Patreon drawings. So we've got those. So sketchbook would be right at the top of the list. And then I really love my Tombow marker pens and I really did just start by buying three or four and I've built up the collection. I know you can get a box with a whole lot and I was going to do that but I feel like I'm too far in now. So here I have, here are the colours I have so far <laughs> and, and really what I've done is I started with I can't even remember what I started with, kind of I think some brown, some green, a couple of browns, a couple of greens, maybe a yellow, red, blue and then I've built it out. I remember thinking, I'll never want lilac, purple, mauve, like these colors are not things I'm gonna want. But as I've explored more into drawing what's around me, of course what happened this spring is there were a whole plethora of purple flowers. So suddenly I needed to go and add all of these shades of purple to my collection. So it's pretty full. I would also say it's quite good to get one of these. It rolls up really nice and easy. I got this in Rome, but you can get them anywhere. Um, it rolls up nice and easy and goes in your bag. I think this we could probably say is pretty much full. I think I worked out I can carry maybe four more markers in here and then it is maxed out. But that just means I've got to go on another one, right? So another type of marker is the Liquitex. Now I had a few of these and they've dried up. I've subsequently found that I was storing them in the wrong way, so I'm a bit gutted. This one works really, really well. It's got a big chisel top and makes a big mark. And I, when I was painting with acrylics um, professionally full time a few years ago, I did really advocate for the Liquitex colors. They were vibrant, bright, and they really matched my artwork. So when I saw they were making these, I thought this is great. At the moment, I just have orange and black, and I'm looking to go and infill some more colors. Again, not great for detail, but brilliant for just getting some big areas in and loosening up with your sketching. Now, if this is something you're thinking, I am never gonna do that, then these are gonna not be for you. But if you like the idea of making big, bigger marks where they're not so accurate, then something like this is gonna be brilliant. I've also got some Posca pens, um, and again, this is the chisel top. Um, and again, you can make nice marks with those. You've got to give them a bit of a shake and get the ink down to the end. But And then I just bought a cream one the other day because I could see that that's quite good for going over things. If you're like, oh, I don't like that area of my sketch, I'm just going to block it out. And somewhere I've got a narrow white one as well. So again, I'm just picking the colours that I like and adding them in. So something I had for all my artistic life were these... Um, art line drawing system kind of fine liners and they come in point one, two, three, four, right up to eight, nine. I think this is a point two and I've always drawn with these. These work quite often my default. I would do a, some sort of color wash and then I would draw with pen. And interesting, I haven't been using them as much lately, but I think I will throw them back into the mix now. So I've got, I've gathered them all together. I've got a lot of them. Some work, some don't. But I think these are essential. Again, great to go in the bag, great to travel. So if you're thinking, you know, this is a pretty easy kit you could just put in your bag, right? And a sketchbook, some color, two different types of marks easy, good to go. So things like refillable pens, I've had these for a while and just put water in them and again if you're using watercolour pencils um, and the Tombow markers and many other things that are water soluble you can just add the water um, and play with them. But I've seen a lot of people also filling them with um, paint or ink or their own colours and actually mixing them and making them their own kind of marker pens. So there are lots of different brands and I think there are lots of different things you can do with them. This one is a kind of round one. I think one's a chisel one. That's a sort of flat one. And I've got a few more somewhere else. So I think these are definitely a great idea that you can definitely expand on those. And then ink, I used to have lots of ink and they've dried up over the years, but I still have this. And I think I'm gonna expand that range as well. This is a good old sepia. And I have things like, you know, these belong to my mum. And this was something I made at art school when I, back in the day, a bamboo, homemade bamboo pen. And thank goodness I never threw it out. I'm so excited by that. And I've even found 
Um, that was the, obviously the brush I used for the ink because it's covered in black ink. So excited to rediscover those as well. And again, you know, when you're doing mixed media, you want to put in different things, maybe not too many, um, a bit like cooking, isn't it? You don't want more than sort of five ingredients in one dish. So you don't perhaps want more than five different things. But the idea is to mix and try different things out. So I definitely want to get back into doing some of that because I used to do that as part of my practice when I was younger. I have hundreds of brushes and I'll maybe just show that on screen. But having something like something wider that will make some bigger marks, um, this is useful too. All right, let's talk about colored pencils. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but when I was at school, we had the colored pencils and I loved my colored pencils. And this is what I wanted to show you actually. So um, I think I've got one box at home. I, I had a few and they've traveled over from the UK in my storage container um, here to Australia. And this was the original Caran d'Ache Prismalo 2 soft pencils. I remember when they came out, so excited. And as you can see, they're a little bit battered now, um, right the way down to the little tiny brown here. So you can buy a pencil extender, so I could do that to make it easier to hold. I actually saw somebody today with little tiny pencils like that. I thought, how do you hold those? But these, these were lovely. These were amazing back in the day. There's still nothing wrong with them. Look, here's a tip. Go around the charity and op shops. You can quite often find boxes of colored pencils Sometimes people don't really realize what brand they are. Sometimes you can get a real bargain. I think the spare set I have at home was $5 at a garage sale and they were top quality Derwent pencils. So that was a bit of a win. Definitely worth keeping an eye open for that. And then, um, oh, talking about Derwent, some watercolor pencils again. I've had these, I don't know how long, but as you can see, obviously I've used them a bit, but probably not as much. If the budget doesn't run to this, buy them singly. You can often buy them online singly or some art shops will favor one brand and you can go and just get a few colors. Find out which brands you like. Find out whether you like the watercolor pencils or more the oil-based pencils. So I like to have both. She says clanging and making a big noise. All right, so I have um, the Derwent Chroma chroma flow i went and bought these just before i realized the ink tents would be nice so maybe that's what father christmas will bring me um so i've got these and i've been using these a lot and i love to draw with them i have to say the downside is the leads are breaking really quickly and easily and so on my i think there's three trays here on my smaller set half the pencils have broken all the way down i don't know whether i dropped them somewhere or anyway that's just a little bit of something that's a bit concerning however I'm just leaving these in the studio, not moving them. So that's those. And then I recently invested in these, back to the old Caran d'Ache again. And these are their Luminance, and they are the most light fast pencils out there apparently, and their colors are simply stunning. They're so stunning, I, I haven't even used them that much. There's um, this tray here, and this tray here. And there's a beautiful set. And again, you can get many more of these, but I thought I would just get this set. And they are just creamy, buttery, beautiful to work with. So if you decide that color pencils are your thing, then probably you want to invest in the best of the best. And I reckon these are right up there. Um, you never know what's gonna get brought out. And I say ink tents are amazing. They have some amazing products I don't have, but they've got blocks and pencils and giant blocks. Um, and there are videos out there showing you how to use those. Actually, a shout out to Katie again. She's got an amazing video on her um, YouTube where she shows you how to use those as well. All right, what have we not spoken about? Oh, we've gone into pencils and let's talk about Neo Colors. So again, this is Caran d'Ache. <laughs> Just takes me back to my childhood, I think. I love that brand. So as you can see, this is my own set in here. And I'm collecting these singly because I wasn't sure I was going to like crayons. I felt they were a bit like back to junior school. But actually, I love them. So what I did was I bought some singly from an art shop in Sydney. Sydney? Maybe over east somewhere. And had them flown over. And so I've got that little selection and then I've put the, the ones I use the most, the greens, the whites, in here. And then I change these up according to what I'm drawing. And I'm just going to build out the whole collection. Thank you to a local artist who donated her pot um, and it's become the Caran d'Ache pot. So that's great. And maybe last, no, not last but not least, okay, watercolors. So I've never been a fan of watercolors, really. My mother was a watercolor artist 
and I just didn't, it just weren't for me. I obviously went into acrylics and then into oils and loved the colour. However, I did buy these um, in Florence a few years ago and they're the Schmincke watercolours. They were quite an investment and I felt a bit disappointed because I didn't love using them. But now with sketchbooking and a few of them, the, the things have stuck. I need to actually get out with a pen and take the top off. I actually love them. I'm going to clean out these palettes and I'm going to start using them again because I think having flexibility, choosing different materials for what you're drawing, I think is the optimal. This is the kind of like optimal list that you can build up to. But again, I had that sitting on a shelf. I bought it 2019, so I barely used it. And now it's coming into its own. And then, oh no, wait a minute, before we talk about pastels, because I used to use a lot of those, let's talk about paints. So I still, I still have them and I want to reincorporate them. So I do love the golden brand. I mentioned earlier, I, I sort of grew up on Liquitex. I do have all the Liquitex paints, but I also really love the color of the golden. I just think they're just slightly nicer <laughs> for me. So you can get them in the um, fluid or soft body or heavy, however you want them. So these are the fluid ones, which again, could be quite useful in terms of mixed media here in the sketchbook setting. So I've got um, a bit of a rainbow selection of those and then I've got all the others in, in trays <laughs> that if I want to dip in and out of those as well. This is actually a really useful color to have because it's transparent. So to get the transparent like the red iron oxide or there's a few other transparent brownie colors, if you just water that down a little bit and then just wash that over something you've done, it's just gonna add an extra sheen to it. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about soft pastels. Oh, not just soft pastels, let's just talk about pastels. So um, you can see that Sophie likes to buy her materials. So I always had oil pastels and quite frankly hated them until I bought these. And these are, of course, the Sennelier ones. And I bought the big box. And as you can see, I haven't used them. <laughs> but I'm going to use them now. I mean, I've used the odd one. No, I've used the odd one. And the beautiful, the color range here are amazing. So they're kind of the next level from the Neo colors. Obviously, they're oil pastels. They're not water soluble. But you could put them on top of various other things and you can mix them in around or you can just use them on your own for really quick sketches. So look out for more on the oil pastels. I personally think it's worth investing in the real deal. If you buy some student oil pastels, probably the same like a lot of materials, the colors are not great, the experience is not great, but when you buy something like this or you invest in something like this, the quality is amazing. Um, they feel better to use and the results I think everyone would agree are going to be better. Okay, and then I actually brought back from the UK in hand luggage, trip after trip after trip, my thousands of soft pastels and they're all stuck up, stacked up down there. Maybe at some point I'll give you a tour of all my soft pastels, but this is a nice box, would be easy to get. I think this is also available from somewhere like Cass Art. In fact, I may have even bought those from Cass Art. So this is also Sennelier, Rembrandt do something similar. I quite like the Sennelier ones, I have to say. And ultimately, if we were concentrating on pastels, we might go down the handmade pastel route because they would be the best ones to get. But I think if you're going to get shop bought, these soft pastels are absolutely just crumbly, gorgeous, divine. I used to paint large with soft pastels and... Um, I'm really excited to go back and just add them into the mix. The thing now that we need to add that I haven't got in this video, but it's sitting over there and that's a fixative because the more messy you get in your sketchbook, the more you're going to need a fixative just to kind of settle everything onto the page. All right, so that's that. I feel like that's the bottom of my list um, at the moment. I think I got carried away. As you can see, I've got many other things and like I say, I've got various um, things over there, but I'm pretty sure that's pretty much um, what I've got. So okay, now we've looked at the would be nice. We've had the basic set and the kind of would be nice materials. I definitely really enjoyed going through all of those. It's great to do a bit of a studio vlog sometimes. So here's a little bit about some of my favorites and how I've used them in my sketchbooks. Let's go and look at that quickly. I would say at this stage, my current go-to is either starting with um, gouache and then working over it with pencils for example um, something like that this is in my second 
Europe trip travel sketchbook. So I've done quite a few like that. They're all kind of falling apart now. This was the other mixture that I quite like. Um, and that was, I just did them with Neo colors. Actually, some of them were just Neo colors. A couple of them I put a little bit of paint and they were really quick um, and really luxurious to do. So I'm either doing that or I'm actually just doing the whole thing with the Tombow markers. And that way I don't need the spray. Um, and I really liked this one. This was a scene, this is where I used that purpley color that I never thought I would use. So this was a scene at the bottom of the cottage that we've bought here in Western Australia. Um, and all these flowers came out in the spring just, and they've just died about a week ago. And there was just a sea of them. So I had to go and buy these colors in order to depict them in the sketchbook. But that is literally just done with marker and nothing else. So at the moment, I'm just keeping it simple. Where's another example um, where I've been mixing it together? I suppose this one, this is from the uh, cottage garden. So again, I've just started with gouache paint and then I've worked in with some pencil and some of those Neo colors and that's it. And at the moment, I'm really happy with that combination. I might have all of these things, but actually I'm getting the look that I want at the moment just with those materials. So what's gonna come up next is I will use different media. I'll probably get myself a new sketchbook and start doing the different explore with the inks, explore with the soft pastels. But at the moment, that's what I'm doing. I'd love to hear what you're inspired in doing, what materials you use. Please do leave a comment below and let me know what art materials you use, what materials you're inspired to use now having watched this video and anything else that you'd like me to share. I'm sure you'd like a process video that's coming up. I'm making one of those, um, how I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, but if you'd like me to make a video about anything else art related, please do let me know either below the video or over on my Instagram account at Sophie Mahir Art. Thank you so much for watching for this one. I think it's time that I clear up this mess and start doing some more drawing. I'm on my year long daily sketching challenge and I'm on day four as I'm shooting this video. So I'm gonna go away and play with my prompt rocks. All right, take care everybody. See you soon, bye.